Ladies and gentlemen, mabibi na mabwana, karibuni, karibuni tena. This is still a non-call presentation of the One Mark Show. And without much further ado, Buda Boss. Karibuni kazi. Kama kala nyingine ya One Mark Show, ijumaya leo tarimbili februari. Wiki ambayo kiongozi wa NASA Vaila Odinga liya pishwa katika bustani la Uhuru Park. Ni furaha kubwa kujunga nanyi tena wapenzi wa sikilizaji tukiwa tumewaandalia wa, taarifa za kusisimua mziki wa kata viungo na kindumbu ndumbu ndumbu cha siasa au politics tukipanda. On the one mic show tonight, Nasa's Raila Odinga gets sworn in at Uhuru Park as his lieutenants Tom Kajwang and Miguna Miguna get arrested for taking part in the oathing ceremony. Is Kenya ignoring signs of impending chaos? We also talk about uh, the fire that gutted Kijiji slums in Langata area. Has the acceptance of government failure become the new normal? And in African news, we'll review the newly launched single African air transport market. Will traveling within Africa finally become cheaper, convenient, and hassle-free? Nabila kusao tapokea mziki wetu toka DJ wetu machachari mleta habari sisilo moshfaya na tuta dunda 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 kule viwanjani na mika och jezi nambari saba mgongone ya kituletea habari za michezo. Moja kwa moja toka Kilimanjaro Studios ni mimi mtangazaji na mwanahabari wako mpendwa Ali Badawi. Wengine wanita mteule na kwetu wananita mjuku wa Masai. Because I'm Kenyan by blood, American by design, Masai by choice. Si chagui, si kagui, na si bagui. Karibu ni tena. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Wapi Awa Zapi Awa, where we are ready to serve you today with your frivolous, exciting, and wonderful cocktails for the day. And... Um, as early as we the main menu for the day, also the sports today, we're going to talk about um, the Super Bowl. The big weekend is here. We're going to talk about Minnesota, uh, uh, what's going to happen in Minnesota. In a freezing six degrees, there's going to be the day that all of America and most of the world is going to lay their eyes on Minnesota. Suddenly, Minnesota is getting itself on the world map for a good reason. We're also going to talk about... Um, the Winter Olympics, Kenya for the first time have a skier. You've had it right. Kenya have a skier who's going to compete in the Winter Olympics and we're also going to talk rugby uh, where the Kenyan national team Shuja is currently taking part in the Wellington Seven. And without uh, wasting any more of your time, sit back, enjoy and have a wonderful show. Yo, 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 yo. It's another week. Another dollar. Don't forget, this is how we do. Karibu, karibu, karibu nasi. Once again, the one and only. Omosh fire, aki fanyaje, aki waletea mziki. I'll see you, twende kazi. Ah, 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 Omosh, I haven't heard that one again. Anyway, we're back. It's Friday. It's your girl, Lady E. Hmm, what are we going to talk about today? I think I have lined up the Black Panther premieres. We had hit misses again it was history making a lot a lot of melanin on that red carpet um we're also going to talk about some irresponsibilities in our own diaspora uh reporting that we have here in the usa and of course we're going to finish off with our special vegas report i think that's how we're going to rebrand our fungua rojo session right or is that <laughs> or is that doing too much i, I no, don't no, know no. i don't know it's well deserved oh it is yes it is? Yes. All right. So, yes, stay tuned. Stay locked. Now, let's talk politics. Welcome again to the politics segment live from Kilimanjaro Studios on OneMikeShow.com and Facebook Live. Tonight, we'll be talking about the swearing-in of NASA leader Raila Odinga and the drama surrounding it. We'll then revisit the Kijiji slum fire that happened last Sunday. And we'll get to review the newly created single African air transport market at the African Union. I'm your politics anchor, Ali Badawi. And in studio is a regular panel of Humphrey Muturi, Sisi Lomosh, and Elka Fresher. Over the phone, we have Mika Och. And our producer is Mr. Mubelwa Bandio, who is on standby to contribute. I want to welcome all our listeners once again. And we'll be taking in your comments. Just dial the number 202 683 Four five seven zero star five to speak. To get started, this week in politics, we saw the mock swearing of NASA leader by Laudinga witnessed by tens of thousands of people at Uhuru Park. The oath was, administ was administered by Waraka Member of Parliament Tom Kajwang, flanked by NRM Kenya's General Miguna Miguna, both of whom were since arrested and got bailed out. 
Notably absent at the ceremony were NASACO principals, uh, WIPA leader Kalondo Musioka, Ford Kenya leader Moses Wetangula, and Amani National Congress leader Musalia Mudabadi. The government, through the Communications Authority of Kenya, made good their threat to shut down outlets that were planning to air an event that they termed as treasonous. Major broadcasters, KTN, NTV, and Citizen went dark, and the government has since uh, defied court orders to allow them back on air. We're going to get started, uh, and, 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 and I want to talk to Mika first, you know, uh, and this is before we go to the arrest and the media blackout. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the reasons behind Mudava Diwetangula and Kalonzo not showing up uh, for the swearing-in ceremony? Particularly, what are people from Western Kenya saying about Mudava Diwetangula? Mika, that's your question. Uh, pretty much everybody disappointed why, uh, with, the, with why they didn't show up for the swearing for the swearing in, as in, uh, you saw the masses were there, a lot of people were there. It was something that was supported by a, a majority of the masses supporters, and uh, most people were were really surprised why these two co principals are not there since they support they also they, it was a, it was an agreement that the whole NASA conglomerate was supposed to walk to to go as a unit. And the thing is, when we come to NASA, it's not just an issue of Raila; it's an issue of this region sticking to their guns, showing that oh, that they, they don't have faith in the central government as it is. So. These are their leaders that they were expecting their leaders to represent them. So we've had excuses. There was a press conference where they say that uh, these guys were uh, under house arrest. They couldn't come out of their houses. We don't know what the, what the reason is. We don't know what the issue is. As in, if you look at the pictures, if you look at the videos of the press conferences they're doing together, these guys look to be they look to be in harmony. They doesn't seem like there's any issue between them. So for the time being now, it's a lot of speculation about why they didn't show up, why they showed up, that... In reality, on that particular day, I would have sworn that those two guys' political career in Western had died. Okay, and it's interesting you say that. that it's uh, interesting you say that, Mika. Okay, it's interesting you say that, Mika, because uh, we had a uh, court to Secretary General Atwoli call them out, uh, Mudavadi and Wetangula, uh, in a meeting uh, where he said that uh, he will not um, give his support uh, anymore. And we also know very well that uh, during the swearing in, the Sultan, Ali Hassan Joho, was there. So there's talk, uh, some people are saying out there, that uh, this was a clear turning point, uh, and it makes it very clear who will possibly succeed Raila in uh, 2022. Do you think Sultan Ali Hassan Joho will get support in Western Kenya? Mika? Most definitely. Uh, currently, right now, uh, the only person who would have messed, uh, brought a little bit of competition for him was uh, was uh, Ababu. Ababu messed up himself, and uh, Joho, the way as he has set up himself, uh, he, he's been open to the party. He's been open to. He's been showing up that he has the uh, lack of better words, the cojones to face the current leadership. He has the gut. He has to. He's fighting. He stands up against himself. He's been championing for the cause. So, uh, actually, right now, I don't know anybody who can come in and lay a stake uh, and a claim from not only just uh, Western, but uh, I can also say of Nyanza, and say that there's anybody who's going to come out and say that they're going to get more fo more following than Joho. Remember, there was a time when Ruto was perceived as the next of kin. Even Nyanza were, were opening up to him until he turned around and went to Jubilee. Okay. All right. Uh, again, you're tuned into the One Mike Show. We're streaming live from Kilimanjaro Studios outside Washington, D.C. We are live on Facebook and on OneMikeShow.com, where you can contribute anonymously. And to talk to us, the number to dial is 202-683-4570 and press star 5 to speak. We're currently speaking on the reasons why there was an absence of the core principles of NASA. We're speaking to Mika. I want to now open this up to uh, the rest of the panel. Um, and we want to, you know, go to the media. And we know the media has previously been accused of siding, you know, with the government on many accounts. And, um, and this is also not the first time that the media has again been on a collision path with the government. So, you know, like a lot of conflicts, you know, they side with them and then they go against them. Uh, I, I want to open this up to the panel and ask, why does the Kenyan media appear to be engaging in a very dangerous dance of love and hate with the Jubilee 
government. Because you want to remember, like, uh, in the 1990s, uh, KTN, for example, they had a very firm position. You know, like, they would not, you know, like, fool around with President Moy's government. They had a very firm position on, um, on, on uh, not necessarily which side they were on, but how they were doing their reporting. They had, like, a firm editorial policy. But you will find sometimes, like, our media houses will even take wholesome government reports and publish them as news. Uh, and then it gets to a point where they also seem to be on a coalition path with the government, like um, what was happening, and they wanted to broadcast uh, the mock swearing-in ceremony, and they were, they, they, they were shut down uh, by the Communications Authority of Kenya. Why is there this uh, back and forth, and what does the media need to do? Elka, I'm going to go to you. I don't know. I kind of like the dance that the media is taking because I think they're stretching the limits that they can get away with with the current um, administration. And I think in this last instance of, you know, clearly the media was shut out. They weren't supposed to stream anything because that level of censorship was so blatantly obvious, not just to Kenyans, but the rest of the world. Now is when, you know, you really start to, you know, see certain people coming out and speaking to, you know, international outlets as well. So, I mean, I like to see if it helps the media grow in the long term. Okay. Now, if you're listening, the number to call is 202-683-4570, star 5, to speak. One mic, I'm going to go to you. What are your thoughts? Uh, what are your feelings about, you know, the happenings this week? You know, a mock swearing in ceremony, media shut down, arrests being made. What are your thoughts? First, if it was against the Constitution, then I would assume that something drastic would have happened. But nothing per se, uh, in any way, or whatever was done, violated the Constitution. Two, I find it, I find it weird, or it, 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 it's, it's worrisome that a situation like that, you know, like the swearing in, you know, can have, um, can have such an, can, you know, and there, there, is, there are, there is a lot of, um, backlash against the fourth estate. Why? I'm still pondering. Why, if, if, if it's not, if it's not uh, wrong, uh, if there are no legal ramifications to that particular uh, uh, swearing in, why be bothered with it? Why should it be? bother you being but, the government but we have a situation where the government is now clearly defying uh, court orders yes uh, and, and and so can we say in one way the constitution is failing because we talked about the constitution so is a constitution failing in that respect where we have a government that's clearly defying court orders you could the constitution is there whatever whatever has been stipulated is there the problem is the government is not following the law it wants on one end for people to follow the law However, itself does not want to follow the law. Now, there we have a problem. Kind of want to have the cake and eat it. Exactly. Okay. And, 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 and I was, uh, you know, it's something that I was thinking, okay, fine, you're, you're shutting down the three major uh, news organizations. Fine, yeah, you want to, okay, because of money, this, that, the other, whatever. But, you know, uh, 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 playing devil's advocate, what you're doing right now is you're giving the same person you're trying to destroy, the same person you're trying to hush, you're giving him more volume. You're giving him a bigger platform. So they were kind of baited and they took the bait. They the took government the bait. took the bait. Yes. Now, on one end, they, 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 they thought by not, by, not really, uh, by not really engaging when the ceremony was going on, mm -hmm. that was, you know, they're like, okay, we're not going to get baited for that. However, they still got baited because of what, they've started, because of what they started doing. Now, if you're going to arrest Tom, Tom Kajwan. If you're going to arrest Miguna, Miguna, okay then, why not arrest Rao? Okay, that's a, that's a very interesting point. And uh, Omosh, I'm going to come to you because we've not heard from you. What are your thoughts about this uh, shenanigans that has been happening this week? Uh, the swearing-in ceremony, the arrests, media blackout. W what were you thinking? Um, I think everything is fine. Uh, here's the thing, just like um, Uno said, I'm the guy who's sitting in State House. I have the, 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 the power, the seat, of, the, the, the seat of authority, I'm the government, I'm running the state machinery. Why am I bothered? Why would I be bothered? I would not be bothered. But the fact that you are bothered shows that there's something. Okay, so there's something so, that so we don't know. It, it shows that there's something. And then on top of that, you have then now 
gone against the constitution and now you're not obeying uh, court orders that are being uh, you know handed down to you. So then the question then becomes: and who who gets held accountable? Is it going to be the uh, Matiang who gets held accountable? Is it going to be whoever is the OCPD of or, of that particular police station or the CID guys or NIS guys? Who's the person who's held accountable for let's say somebody not being freed? And then also with the um, uh, uh, the court order for the for the stations for the radio stations to come back on air. Mm -hmm. Like who is it that is basically are going to be held accountable for that because uh, those jamas refused to accept okay. the uh, the actual court or the court order that was being handed over to them. You know, um, uh, Omtata tried to you know post the stuff up there, and those guys were just you know like they pretty much had this avalanche of uh, uh, undercover cops you know coming and playing these uh, cat and mouse games. Same thing with uh, with Miguna being freed. So I I can't remember on last reports. I don't know if he had actually been freed or they were saying that he was going to get freed. Yes. But then they kept you know shuttling him back and forth to different you know cop stations. Police stations. Uh, he's Mara, he was hooked somewhere in the, in, in Kiambu. Google. In Kiambu. He, so like okay, what was he doing in Kiambu? Yet the guy was at Milimani at some point. Then CG, I don't know. So you know it's like it's the regular usual games. And if anyone has gone through the court system in Kenya. If those jamas want to have you in there, it doesn't matter who you are yes. in terms of from a, uh, a, a standpoint of uh, where you stand in society. They will nyanyasa you as long as orders are coming from above. And above could be the OCPD. It could be the, the DA, DI, DCI office. It could be, you know, the chief of police, whoever, okay. you know, or the IG. It All doesn't right. matter. But okay. things, things get there. Okay, and again, you're tuned in to the politics segment of the One Mike Show, streaming live from Kilimanjaro Studios outside Washington, D.C. We are live on Facebook and streaming on OneMikeShow.com where you can contribute anonymously. And to talk to us, the number to dial is 202-683-4570, a star 5 to speak. Well, we are currently speaking about uh, the political situation in Kenya and, uh, and what's going on. And of course, later on in the show, uh, re later on in the politics segment, we're going to be talking about... Uh, the fire that happened in uh, Kijiji slums, Langata area. And we're going to be talking about the single African uh, air transport market. And I want to go to Elka because we need to get some comments here and there from uh, Facebook. And as you're reading those comments, I want you to contemplate on whether we are silently ignoring signs of an impending civil war. Mm. Or or am, I, or, or am I reading too much into no, this? No, Ali, man, you took the words right out of my mouth. But let me read some mm -hmm. comments here. So we... No, come on. That was very, very <laughs> platonic. Okay. He literally did, because I was going to mention that the oh, signs of the war. Oh, sorry. Ah, never mind. I don't guys, know. It sounded like on. the fish, you Let's know, and fish, you know, when you remove things from the so fish's mouth. So we have uh, Jogun Paul oh. here saying that was a comedy of showing how, how the oath was taken. And then we have Lilian Wakaisa here saying China influence as far as censorship is concerned. And then we have Douglas Kai Kimani saying house arrest, right. Raila Joho 2022. And one thing I want to say on Joho is that he's very ambitious in that, you know, he said on some occasions that he, had, he intends to be the first president of Costarian origin. So I can slowly see him, you know, moving into that position. And this was the perfect opportunity to show to NASA supporters that he can stand by Rao amidst any threats because there are people who say, oh, you know, Calonzo and the others, did principals didn't show up because, what was it, like security detail taken away? Oh, they were had a meeting with the U.S., was it the U.S. attache or the U.S. ambassador earlier who advised them not to come? I don't know. It's so many other stories floating around there. But in terms of are these the signs towards civil war, I think yes, because things happen very subtly that lead to a civil war. And I feel like people are boiling. We're creating new generations of people who are still going to be tribal, who should have never really have have tribalism instilled in them like the youth that's the generation that's going to intermarry not really speak their vernacular language but kind of overlook that but now we've introduced this dynamic to them you know and then we still have the case of you know jubilee supporters you can still support jubilee and come out and say when wrong is wrong okay people do it here all the time you know and and, and we're going to talk about that issue with jubilee supporters you know another time because that's a whole topic on its own okay. and of course we're going to revisit this topic we're going to be closely monitoring what's happening uh because you know like it seems you know there's something that clearly the public is not aware about uh, so we're going to be revisiting this topic um throughout the month and of course i want to remind the listeners that uh, we do have a special segment in the second half of the show where um 
you know, Mika is going to be talking about rugby, Las Vegas exclusively, what you need to do, and talking to us a bit about the players and the team. So you want to um, stay tuned. That's in the second half um, of the show. And then we're also going to talk about irresponsible reporting by diaspora media on crime in the diaspora. This is going to be in the second half of the show. So you want to stay tuned. But back to the politics segment, I um, want to move on to... Uh, the Kijiji fire, and of course we all know that late Sunday night a fire gutted down hundreds of homes at Kijiji slums in Nairobi, leaving four people dead and more than 6,000 residents out in the cold. It took the fire services with assistance from uh, residents more than 10 hours to contain the inferno, which according to the Kenya Red Cross was contained by Monday 6 a.m. That's the following day. According to the standard, the fire started about 9 p.m. in the evening and spread fast, gutting most of the village with firefighters unable to access the area owing to a poor road network. The fire comes in the wake of the newly elected county government in Nairobi acquiring 24 new fire engines. Uh, and pictures were circulating on social media of Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko flanked by President uh, Kenyatta testing the pipes of the newly acquired engines. Now... I'm going to now get out to the panel. Now, this fire happened less than a week ago and is no longer on the headlines. We've seen other fires happening. We've seen buildings collapse. Uh, we've seen road carnage skyrocketing. Has acceptance of government failure become normalized? Uh, I think this time I'm going to start with you one, Mike. Is this becoming a normal thing? Because this just happened on Monday. We we're busy talking about it and, uh, you know, we're discussing how that's going to be our main story. But right now, like on social media, on mainstream media, nobody's really talking about it. Nobody's telling us what's going on. This has been the normal thing. I mean, it did not just start now. Uh, back in the day, we're talking about road carnage back in the day, disasters back in the day. We are there for one day. Next, next day, we're talking about other things. So it's not that it just started now. This is something that has been perpetually going on and on and on. They get the 24 fire trucks and everything and tested and everything is good. Then what purpose are they? I mean, what is their purpose if 10 hours later is when the fire is being put out? I mean, are the trucks, are they, are they doing what they need to do? Are they there fighting the blaze? And there's another thing. Investigations, you know, like, okay, over here, when you have those California wildfires or whatever, there's always an investigation and you find, mm -hmm. and they sort of seem to find out where the origin of the fire started. Right? Yes. You know, if it was a cigarette, if right. it was, it was a cigarette, it was a camp, yeah. whatever. Right. Do you think that would ever happen in the 254? Okay. <laughs> so so are, are, are we in a mode where people are hypnotized by things that are by the user interface? You know, like where, for example, you've been bought for a machine that just has an interface of Windows but it doesn't really have an operating system in it. Because uh, all these um, fire engines were displayed, you know, by the governor and the president. Uh, and, uh, and people were so happy that uh, there, were not, there was not going to be any more fire problems in, in Nairobi County. Or so Absolutely. Yeah. Or so we thought. I mean, look, 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 look at, look at Bomet County when, when fire trucks were being flagged off only to find out that there were power washers that were being used to fight fires. Okay. So there's, there's, there's always that, that being of, you know, grandiose and, you know, uh, uh, a specter, like, yeah. A spectacle. Sh shock spectacle. and awe. Shock and awe. And then yeah. after that, you, go, you know, it's like you go just go back to the normal routine. Okay. Yeah. Alka, let's go to so you. So my whole thing is that the fire trucks that reported ran out of water. But some of the reports that I read when, you know, the news outlets uh, interviewed some of the people who, you know, were victims of the fire, it's like they knew they'd have to supply their own water to help quell the fire. Oh, so you become your own fire hydrant. Exactly. So I was reading that. I was just like, what? But like, where is this water coming from? Like because it's not like we have like uh, exactly. boreholes over there. There are no fire hydrants. No, no, yes, they knew but the they fire have... truck was available, they, but they weren't no, I'm so saying the relying water. on it. But, but, but I'm like, saying, you know, like the people so living in these slum areas have their own water that they use. And like from some of the videos that you are seeing, right? you know, like people were instructing Man. each other to where the water is. on Akwambia kuna maji pale. So I think they're kind of used to this scenario where these fire trucks come and uh, they run out of water exactly. or they're not able to go in. Exactly. Yeah. It, go but ahead. part of part of part of it also is that those kijijis and um, let's let's take the kijiji uh, for instance uh, in Langata. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the uh, Southlands between yes. Southlands mm -hmm. and Tiende Pali. Yeah. Kuna ile kijiji. Uh huh. That kijiji came up. Do you remember how that kijiji came up? That used to be a field. 
Yeah, it's a very recent Kijiji. Yeah, that the, used the, to be used to be line Saba that you could see uh, mm -hmm. from a distance, yep. but that used to be an open space. It was an open space. Yes. Uh, rumor has it Damze died, then there were kiosks up, and people kept building, building, building. Those Jamas were never moved out. Because pretty much the Waluka watu wa Kibira who mm. moved to Langata. Yeah. So now, you, as opposed to saying you have a Kibich address, you have a Langata address. But there is no road in between that a fire truck can fit in. Any emergency vehicle cannot go in. So if we are to fight a fire, you're going to fight it from the road. How long are those hoses? Yeah, but, but with Depending the emergency on... services knowing this, and I want to bring, I want to rope Mika in into this conversation. With the emergency services knowing that their vehicles can't go in mm -hmm. uh, in these uh, very dense, uh, densely Narrow. populated yes. spaces. Uh -huh. What plans do they have when a fire happens? Because you know you can't go in. There needs to be some sort of plan. There needs to be some kind of plan. You know, that's why those residents Man. supply Maji. Okay, Mika, talk to us. Uh, is it with Gigi? Yeah. You know, like, uh, is, is there, do you think that uh, these um, fire departments have some kind of plan? Because we know there are no roads in there. It's, it's nothing new. Uh, is there any plan they have when there's a fire in there because they know that their trucks cannot go in there? Or is there any places in the world that you know uh, that have uh, contingent plans for such spaces? Because it's not only Kenya that has places like that. Honestly, to be honest, I don't think there's a place in the world. Personally, I don't think there's a place in the world where they are ready for such disasters when it comes to the slums. Okay. But uh, one thing we need to know is that uh, it's not only water that fights fire. There are so many agents uh, of fighting fire. There's powder and there's foam. And uh, as you said, we know there's no, we, we know there's no, what do you call it? There's no, there's no road for for us to go. But there's alternative transports. Uh, Kenya, you were talking to me, and Ludi, and Ludi can carry those powder fire firefighting agents. Where okay. like you, uh, you've seen like you drop. Uh, it's like a ball. You drop it inside the fire, it explodes, and then it cuts out the oxygen to the fire and kills that fire. That is one of the things that uh, we might take into consideration when we are getting that disaster preparedness. That uh, disaster preparedness always has millions and millions of shillings to the kitty, but guess what they usually do? They call Red Cross okay. every time there's a disaster. Okay, that's uh, that's very unfortunate. So, uh, and, yeah, and 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 real quick, I think uh, I think what Mike has one quick point to make as we try to wrap up this uh, topic. I'm sure you guys have seen when they're fighting the forest fire. They have that helicopter that goes and totters Maji, then comes in and and right. drops. Mm -hmm. and they have got they, they they do several rounds. Heli yes. one? Helicopters. Okay. What did, yeah, watch, all right. So no, I mean, how, do you uh, really think they're gonna use helicopter again? No, no, I'm thinking out loud because I mean, uh, as Mika is saying, Where? you know, what? citizens too, their lives matter too. Eh? Listen, as Mika is saying, in which Kenya? Kunanduvi. Yes. So it's an alternate. That, that, yes. That's a creative way. It's of a creative it. way. Yes. Of but I don't, I don't think they involve the local residents when they're doing these DR plans. Because you need to involve these jamas. Because how are you gonna be able to come up with a DR plan for Madari? Na wewe mwenyewe ni mutu anakakilimani. Utajuaje? Okay. That is true. Okay. All right. And you're tuned into the One Mic Show. We're streaming live from Kilimanjaro Studios outside Washington, D.C. And we're live on Facebook and on OneMicShow.com where you can contribute anonymously. To talk to us, the number to dial is 202-683-4570 and star 5 to speak. We're currently talking about the Kijiji fire and uh, maybe creative ways of trying to sort these problems and trying to, you know, like uh, help our people who live there when they're faced by... Uh, such uh, tra tragedies and uh you know before we move on uh i want i want to get to elka to read some of the facebook comments and uh you know to you know let us know her final thoughts about this yeah so we have um a comment here from douglas saying how do you support water to put off a fire i guess how do you expect water to put off a fire when there's none to even drink and then we have a couple comments uh on the previous topic saying next life moves on with the swearing in and also, Ian saying, in 2007, we went through hell. The country's divided, but the main underlying issues are the same. You have the fat cats eating the one, and the Mwanainchi suffering, and the kicker is it doesn't discriminate any tribe. The Thank leadership you. is the same, just switched around, yet we're expecting a difference. Why not just scrape this entire leadership and try a new coup because we already know it's a new regime, same result. I'm so on that Team PK or Boniface Mwangi. Holla at me in 2022. <laughs> okay. Look, look, I'm getting eye rolled here in the studio. You guys on camera witnesses are witnesses. They're rolling their eyes. We need to change the entire guard. 
before you move on, Eva says uh, on uh, www.onemicshow.com live chat bottom right hand corner. Eva says, uh, wait, almost. Eva, nice, we got gadgets. That's one step. Do they have gas to make it to where the fire is? Which oh. gadget? Is there water? Which gadget? Right. What's the response about? time? Eva, this are we talking about the Nduzi or she, what is what? she talking about? No. The fire trucks, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. The 22 fire trucks. Oh. The new 22 new fire trucks. Yes, there are actually 24 fire trucks. Sorry, I forgot a comment from Lawrence Kihanya. How could I forget you, our faithful <laughs> supporter, Lawrence Kihanya? Here saying it's not swearing in, it's the mockery of the Constitution. Okay. Thank you, yeah, which is, yeah, that's something to consider as well. Oh, yeah, true, mm -hmm. mockery of the Constitution yeah. and also the government-defying court orders. But again, you know, that's a topic that I said that we're going to revisit. Okay. Uh, and, and, of course, even uh, this topic of the Kijiji fire, you know, we're going to follow up to find out what happens. We know that the deputy president promised, I think, um, 70 million shillings and some, you know, like some math geniuses were doing some calculations. And they were like, that's around, I think, 4,000 shillings per person which is almost um, almost nothing. But again, you know, these are things that we need, you know, very creative thought, very deep thought right. to be able to know, to be able to be prepared for, for such disasters because it's very unfortunate that we lost a couple of lives. And, yes. um, and, uh, and people are not talking about it. You know, like we, we are going to move on to the we next tragedy. We should be losing lives yeah. in this day and age. I think like now, for example, having a helicopter that does, you know, like what they do. Firefighting. One. Firefighting. There should, should be just several. One. There should yeah, be several, several. But at least one, like, you know, come on, Kunamoto. Especially a woman. You go, yeah. like what Mika is saying, either you get that foam stuff or whatever, yeah. you yeah. drop it in a zone. Yeah. Like now, for example, come on, but, Gekosh, but you see. Or whatever. You, that, you, you could drop can be. A little bit nini. Water, I, yeah. But that one, remember, if you oxygen, then if you have survivors there, you may want nini. Oh, I mean, you know, again, like I said, yeah. disaster, this whatever. Needs, coordination. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. It's still coordination. This course. needs yeah. hiring of experts. You know, it needs leadership. It needs, there's Urban a lot of things that are needed to be able to. They come here for disaster recovery stuff, yeah. emergency preparedness. People uh, are sent from Kenya to come to the U.S. and they work hand in hand. We even know people who went back to Kenya who are in part of that nini. Uh, Kamanzi, ask Kamanzi oh. about emergency preparedness in mm. Kenya no, and the uh, organization that is there and how these things are done. So there are people who are there, but I don't know what they're so, preparing for. Oh, maybe they just come to eat at Swahili village. No, 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 no. Again, again, you know, like there's a lot of groups that money. come from Kenya, a lot of government groups that yes, come from Kenya yes, yes. To, to do benchmarking, to compare. Mm -hmm. but, but for the most part, you know, like uh, we sometimes don't get to see the proper results of the things that they yeah, came yeah, to do yeah, here yeah, 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 because yeah. there's no will to implement them there's no leadership and you know and and there's just no and there's no oversight i mean like you know something there's a, um, okay i'm not saying that we create another body for oversight but something that will actually be there to over, to oversee at put least to task. You know what, put to task okay okay ali oh. has done this omosha has not done mika has done elka hasn't done okay good again so like i said uh, well, an, yeah, an oversight. A, they an should oversight. have something. Guys, well, you know, there's probably something already existing that's probably just not doing its job. We don't know that. Uh, yeah, I think she's bureaucracy? right. I think she's right. Oh, okay, Mika, Mika, give us your last thoughts as we close this topic and move on to the next topic. Me, me I want to go back to something more said. Involve the local residents. In those ghettos, people who know the area, talk to them and say, guess what? You will learn the Warosho, the shortcuts, how to move, how to navigate in there. Because guess what? Those people carry stuff, carry furniture into those houses. So there is I a believe. road that is slightly wide enough to sit a, a car. And other household stuff. So work with them. And those people can actually show you the way around. And guys, and then the authorities and the disaster prepared this area can actually map a route in case of disaster that we can do this and this and this and set it up. So if you if these guys are coming to the States to be taught how to put out fire, they are taught how to put out fire in a third world country setting. No, in a first world setting. So take this first world knowledge to that third world country and merge it with what is there in that third world and work with it. So I agree with what Omosha said. You can go to all these courses of uh, disaster preparedness. They can go and learn how to that how to detonate chemical bombs. But guess what? If the issue in Kenya is not chemical bombs, it's, it's, it's uh, regular C4 bombs, then their preparedness was for not. They okay. just came, ate, had fun, got paid for DM, and All went right. back. Okay.
All right, very interesting comments coming from Mika. Now, uh, there's, I think, like two more comments, and then we're going to wrap up this section as we move on to our next topic. Yes, we have um, a first comment from Lydia Kerubo, my Nyakemincha sister. Your Nyakemincha sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's saying any plans for the community or issues affecting their lives should be done FUBU style, for us, by us. Hello. And Ati Helicopters Humphrey, that's called Champagne Dreams on a Beer Budget. <laughs> and then from Ian uh, Murray, do we have, we need to focus on the leadership from the grassroots as Omosh said involve the locals yes. but yet you're going to vote someone who doesn't get your issues look at Machacos despite the negligence protect your CDF and county funds and you'll get to the main uh, government and then we have Edwin Yamwea here saying power belongs to the people not people in power and this is going to end soon what we are witnessing in Kenya is dictatorship whoa 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 comments are coming in Le from prince kabu let the government do their work to protect the lives of people actually switching of those media houses has helped a lot most was this in rural areas are going home early at 7 p.m with daily bread oh. <laughs> <laughs> no kuana news kabu, you're killing us. <laughs> as they used to freedom of media in kenya should be minimized when i to me everybody actually some media houses are Shit hole. Okay, Kabu, Kabu is killing <laughs> us. And, and, and on that note, on that note, I think we need oh, to wrap up this topic. Yeah, yeah. To the hour. <laughs> so Mutudo and censorship. Ah, yes. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Kabu, Kabu, that, 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 that's a very interesting comment from Kabu. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, like I want to remind the listeners that you tuned into the One Mike Show, streaming live from Kilimanjaro Studios outside Washington <laughs> D.C. We are live on Facebook uh, and uh, on OneMikeShow.com. You can contribute anonymously on the bottom right hand of the website. And to talk to us, the number to dial is. 202-683-4570, star 5 to speak. We are currently uh, talking about the Kijiji fire, and uh, we want to move on now to uh, the next topic that we have. We have a very interesting topic, not one of the usual things that we normally cover. We want to talk about the single African air transport uh, market. And uh, first I want to ask, uh, I want to start by asking, you know, listeners and people on the panel whether you knew that Africa accounts for less than 3% of international air traffic despite uh, being 15% of the world's population? And did you also know that it may cost you up to three or four times more to fly over a similar distance in Africa as in the United States? Now, the African Union under its new president, Paul Kagame, recently launched the single um, African air transport market, an effort to unify and liberalize Africa's air transport market. The single market is meant to allow African airlines access across the continent and grant freedoms of air traffic rights to carriers transporting passengers or providing uh, freight services. Among the potential benefits touted under this uh, project include shorter travel times, lower fares, and new routes with increased frequency. This is, say, this is said will in turn increase, uh, it will, will lead to an increase in tourism, trade, and inward investment. At its launch, only 23 out of 54 countries signed up for the single market. Now, among the countries on board, we have Kenya, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Egypt, Nigeria, amongst a host um, of other countries. Now, uh, to get us started, um, we'll talk about the current experience of air travel uh, within Africa. And on, on our panel, of course, uh, we have Elka, who has done quite a bit of traveling within Africa. She's, of course, Kenyan, and uh, she's been to countries like Tanzania, Uganda, Ghana, South Africa, Egypt, amongst many other countries. Equatorial Guinea. Oh, and Equatorial Guinea, too. Egypt. All right, that's good. Uh, okay, okay. For example. Yes. Now, Elka, I want you to please uh, tell us how your experience has been traveling within Africa thus far, you know, like just uh, by air. How has your experience been? Okay. Before I even get to that, first of all, this whole... Um, STAM movement is not anything new. Anyone who was following the AU knew, like in 1988, now, there was. Let's talk politics. Hey, you trying okay. to cut me off? No, no, My voice matters in this studio. Okay, Please. all right. <laughs> it went Sorry. Black. It, yeah. It, yes. It's not black. So, um, no. so yeah, the Yamusuku Declaration in 1988, where the nations, the AU members, first agreed that they're going to create like this. The single of, market. Yeah, the single market mm -hmm. for um, airlines. But then a lot of regulatory complications came up, and that's why it almost slowed down. So um, this, new, this new regulation is kind of in the spirit of that. So my own experience, right, traveling just from Kenya to South Africa, one, the documents that I came into South Africa with 
weren't really respected on my way to Kenya. Like they were fretting over like my yellow fever, all this stuff over inspecting my visa. But then oh. when I went to search for flights. Okay, when you say the documents like the yellow fever, you, you had to have a yellow fever to go into SA? Or you're coming from the US, they they didn't really t- like they didn't check our yellow books, okay. but then for intra Africa, they were like so adamant. They're like, no, yeah. if you don't have it, you need to go over there. But then when I booked my ticket just from you know Cape Town to Nairobi, that was eight hundred dollars. Cape Town to I, Nairobi, and then yeah. I had a connection. I had to connect. Was that a, that Town, was round trip, right, or was one way? Round trip. Okay, but eight hundred dollars is still high. Cause that, is that like no, that's, uh, it, that's how, how, how long? How long is that flight? Is it uh, two hours? Three hours. Three it's hours. three hours. Three hours. Three hours. So it's less than an hour from Cape Town to Joburg. Okay. And then it's like three and a half hours from um from Joburg to Nairobi. But I was like eight hundred dollars. That's a distance yeah. like from DC to Texas. Exactly. To like Dallas. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, exactly. And then even when you look at visa inconsistencies, like I know for South Africans, South Africans traveling to Kenya do not have to show a visa. But Kenyans going to South Africa have to show a visa. Have a visa. And I think is it, it, that's not the Commonwealth type thing or it's an agreement? It's because we're not in SADC. The, 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 there used to be a Commonwealth agreement which is no longer valid. Uh, which, Commonwealth which, countries. Which is now could, dependent upon which country. It's, it is, it's right? now dependent upon countries. Kenya is kind and I think we allow you know uh, some, some, some countries some nations, uh, to yeah. come in yeah. uh, even despite those nations not allowing us to tourism. go in without a visa. Think of it as tourism. Because right? we do get a lot of tourists who come And then from that now side. we have these, you know, the confluence of passports. The AU is proposing a single passport. We have now the EAC passport. You then have the ECOWAS, you know, passport moving around. And then there's, yeah, there's an African passport too, which the, 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 the AU wants to create. You know, so it's kind of like you're going to have so many documents on you. Yeah, but even if you start looking at flights, so let's say if you want to go from like the biggest city in uh, the two travel between the two biggest cities in Africa, right? So that would be Lagos and Kinshasa. Yes. So what do you guys think? How would you get there if you're uh, traveling from Lagos to Kinshasa? Do you think it would be a direct flight? Do you think it's no. something that would cost $600? Do you think it's something it maybe the flight cost you time? about 800 Yeah, I mean, but, but, but looking at the distance, you would, you, th- that's, I mean, unless you've traveled within Africa, right. you would not really know, you know, like if I'd not travel there, I would think that maybe it would cost me maybe like... Uh, Maybe three hundred dollars, uh, two hundred and fifty dollars. No, hey. you know, you're, get, you're gonna get, have to go get maybe Kenya. one connection. Yeah. You're not it's gonna, like eight hundred no to twelve hundred, depending no on the season. You're gonna you have to stop, go to Kenya. You stop in Lome, right? And then you have a, a an over. Yeah, you stop in. Yeah, you stop in Togo. You switch airlines to. Um, there's this one airline actually that operates in the um, first French West African area called ASCII, mm-hmm. and guess who the parent company is of that airline. Ghana no, De- guess. Delta? No, guess who the parent company? Who's coming out as a beast in Africa? Ethiopia? Of, yes. Oh, wow. So That's interesting. So when this S- SATM launches, who's going to be reaping the benefits? Ethiopia. Ethiopian. Now, Where's Kenya Airways? Now, now, That's all I'm saying. Now Where's that, Kenya Airways? That is a very this? interesting point to bring in, mm-hmm. and, and, and I want to segue to this other part of this same topic that, um, that I was talking about. And um, despite all the potential benefits of a single air market, not everyone is celebrating with some 32 countries not signing uh, up to the agreement. Aviation publication AIN Online reported that some African countries have uh, put up stiff resistance to its implementation, while several African airlines continue to criticize the initiative. Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni expressed fear that the single market will lead to the supremacy of African skies by a few already dominant African airlines. He also said he prefers that African countries form regional airlines first before liberalizing their skies. Nigerian Private Airline Association has also denounced the policy arguing for a level playing field where they can compete with other African carriers, which still enjoy some sort of protectionism, lower interest rates on loans, and waivers on import duty for aircraft uh, and spares. Now, I want to go to Bandio uh, first on this because Tanzania is one of the countries that... uh, refused to sign up uh, on, this, on, 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 on this agreement. Now, Mubelwa, Tanzania tunajua ni mojo wapo enti zilizo kataa kujiunga na soko hili la pamoja la usafiri wa ndege barani Afrika. Tueleze labda kwa mtazamo wako, um, sababu labda serikali ya Tanzania kutokubali kujiunga na soko hili. Au labda ni swala lipi, wizara uchukuzi inahofia katika kujiunga na soko hili. Mubelwa, tuende kazi. Okay, kabla sijaongea ngoja kwanza nimlete mtu ambaye anaweza akaongea vema zaidi uh-huh. uh, kwenye kwenye simu hapa. Ala, 
Mm. Kuna mtu tayari kwenye simu? Yes. Haya. Eh? Okay. Hello Kenny. Naam, nipo. Karibu sana. Haya Kenny, karibu sana ndani ya One Mic Show. Swali umesikia uh, tueleza ni kwa nini labda kuna hofu wa Tanzania kujiunga na soko hili la usafiri wa ndege? Twende kazi Kenny. Ta, uh, mimi kwa haraka haraka ingawa nilikuwa sijaangalia ni tatu nimekuja kujifuku wiki leo kitu muda mchache uliopita nafikiri Tanzania imekuwa na experience ya bad experience ya past katika East Africa community kwa hiyo Tanzania kwa sasa imekuwa careful kwa kuangalia kila inapoingia katika jambo fulani isizilimike tena kwenye kule nyumba Hello okay kupata so kwa s- yani ni maana kwamba Tanzania ilipojiunga katika katika East Africa community hata ilipovunjika Tanzania ilizulumika uh-huh. katika namba za ndege namba za nani kwa hiyo sasa hivi Tanzania imekuwa ni suspicious katika kila adventure ya kitu chochote sio tu katika shirika la ndege hata katika East Africa community ukiangalia Tanzania inakuwa nyuma Okay. kuwa mbele kutokana na bad experience ya mwaka 2017 ilizosema. Okay, haya maoni mazuri sana bandio unasemaje? Nitaomba mpigie Magufuli. Eh? <laughs> Ma- magufuli mteja patikani kwa sasa. Wewe? Sijijua ki politics, unajua tatizo sasa hivi Tanzania hataki kuzungumza. Kwa hiyo inakuwa ngumu sana 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 kwa kwa mfano kupata wizara kuweza kuambia kwa nini amegoma kufanya hivyo. Mm-hmm. Uh, lakini sijajua kwa nini nchi nyingine 31 pia zimegoma kufanya hivyo uh-huh. unajua kwa sababu unazungumzia nchi 23 tu ndo ambazo zimekubali yes. na tuna nchi 54 Afrika uh-huh. kwa kuna nchi 31 wamekataa wamekata. wamegoma ukirudi nyuma kulikuwa kuna ile ilikuwa inaitwa ni ya masokro uh, yeah, wa mwaka 88 ya, mwaka, yes. ya masokro declaration, declaration. Yeah. ilikuwa na watu wengi kuliko ya mwaka huu ambao walikuwa wamekubaliana nayo. Ah okay. Kwa sasa bado kuna maswali kitu gani ambacho kimekosekana hivi sasa. Kwa hiyo sina details sana kuhusu na Tanzania nimejaribu kuangalia hawajatoa press au taarifa. Ya hakuna hakuna taarifa yote ambayo amezungumzwa na na kuhakikishia ukipiga hata ubalozini sasa hivi utaambiwa hatuwezi kuzungumza kwa sababu kila mtu anajaribu kukinga unga wake unajua. <laughs> sababu kizungumza kicho nje na ambacho hakijathibitishwa na mheshimiwa utaitwa. Okay. Lakini acha niulize tutahesabu somali hapo. Kwa ni um, Ni nchi lakini I mean probably the ya... space huko ata dushi mu Twitter will be shut down. Kwa Africa na China. Okay, so so, so, let, so let's go let's go back to Elka to to wrap up this cause our time is running out. Uh you know you, you wanted to say something about Nigeria. Right. So I think the one of the reasons Nigeria didn't, you know, agree to join the SATM is that they flat out came out and said that you know, we don't think our national or our um our local airlines can compete to the level of the outside place. Just think about it. When you open up your skies, you have, you know, regional beasts like uh, Ethiopian Airlines, right, Mm -hmm. that are coming in. Of course, if they offer competitive rates and are able to really capitalize on their hub-spoke models that they already have, you'd kind of run out of business the smaller airlines that run inefficiently. Okay. And and an interesting comment here coming from Peter Vladimir Putin. He says Nigeria remains the biggest disappointment of Africa. Please don't bring wow. anything to do with these gorillas from the West. Wow, wow, that's wow, Peter wow, Vladimir wow. Putin. Hey, Vladimir <laughs> Putin. But that's having the interest of their own local um, airlines and ha- taking that into consideration. Uh, mm-hmm. I wanted to ask Kenny before before we, we wrap up. Um, I mean, maybe we can just give what he suspects might, you know, I mean, Bandio said the, the government is not commenting, but could there be hypotheses as to why maybe Tanzania is not does not want to participate? Okay. See, si, see, si, Kenny, Kenny, it's part of my own. I'm sure that I'm going to come over to Malaysia. No foreigners allowed. Kenny, I'm going to come over. Read us the last comments and then. You okay. Know, so Zawadi says, yeah, all that sounds about right. Uh, people are scared to go to Africa. Stereotypes run deep and long. Price isn't determined by distance. Hi, Mubelwa. From okay. Zawadi. Okay. Easy. <laughs> hey, uh-uh. <laughs> okay. All right. Side combos. Oh, you know what? I think you had. had uh, yeah, uh, Kenny. Kenny. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you there? Kenny Badopo. What to skiza? Yes, I'm here. Did you get my question? I had a kamoja to Malizia, Kenny. Kwanini, you know, Tanzania wana wana a suspicion. Na labda kuna kuna sababu labda ambao labda watu wa wajui. Kwanini wataki kujiunga. Dakamoja mwishu. 
Ya yeah, mimi kwa hesabu ya haraka haraka nilivyosema kama experience ya kule Jumapili shirika la ndege la Tanzania eh ya Tanzania kwa sasa ndio linafufuka nilianguka uwezo katika kupea na QQ au Ethiopia Airlines na mengine na tatu Tanzania labda inafanya ina, bado inafanya study kama huu muungano wa mashirika ya ndege yanaleta something substantial what happened to Air Africa ambuli kwa ina rai ina ruka kwenye funko phone why it went down kitu kama hicho okay Asante sana and uh, that was Kenya hapo akitutolea sababu ni kwa nini Tanzania wajajiunga na moja ali yeah, ni kwamba wa, wa, members wote uh-huh. bado wanaweza wakajiunga anytime okay. na tayari tangu wameanza tayari kuna wengine wanne wametaka kujiunga okay. kwa bado watu wanaona kwamba afadhali uchukue risk ya kukaa kando uh-huh. alafu uone kama kweli na matunda then you can join in okay. kwa labda watajiunga Asante sana and and hapo uh, ndo mwisho wa uh, segment ya single uh, africa air transport market and also brings us to the end of our politics segment of course you're tuned into the one mic show you know our number is 2026834570 star 5 to speak uh, we are on facebook live and on one mic show.com and for this week that was politics sports and more sports in the one mic show ladies and gentlemen it's still a non core presentation of the one mic show we are getting into the sports with our anchor mika Thank you and Mike. And uh, today in sports we're going to talk about uh, uh the Winter Olympics. Uh, then we're going to talk about the uh, rugby which is currently going on and we're going to talk about Super Bowl. So starting out today we're going to start with uh or with rugby whereby uh, the Kenya national team Chuja are aiming to get a minimum 10 points uh from this uh Wellington 7th in New Zealand. Uh, which are currently going on. Shuja have qualified to go uh, for the quarterfinals after beating uh, Samoa in the first game and uh, also beating uh, Canada in the game that uh, just concluded a few minutes ago. We do remember that in um, Australia they finished fifth um, after they lost to the fifth uh, semi-finals after losing to Fiji which made them get 10 points which is 7 points better than uh what they got the last time in uh Dubai so my question to you guys is uh what do you think do you think the team is strongly picking up and getting strength uh tournament after tournament should we expect this year to have a Vegas tournament where the Kenya team actually does hold its own and probably reach the final or win it what do you think guys Okay I'm actually very impressed with uh, the recent string of performances you know when the season started I was a bit disappointed but I'm impressed with the direction in which they're going you know they're gaining you know more confidence you know uh, you know a few small mistakes even the game that we lost to South Africa you know it was just a few errors here and there but I think you know the mindset is right I'm very optimistic about uh, Las Vegas you know I didn't know about the win in Canada thank you so much for giving us mm-hmm. an update on that the win against Samoa that was big because Samoa huge. has been doing well this season mm. so I do have a lot of hopes you know I'm getting ready to go to Vegas to end the study I can't wait you know <laughs> to be right front and center Mika Uh yeah me too as in uh, what I'm seeing right now I'm seeing an improvement for this game I'm seeing an improvement for the boys and uh, remember we are missing a few of our key players but still the uh, the young boys who are going on and they're putting and fighting and really improving so I'm skeptical about Vegas I believe that uh, this might be a year where we actually go to Vegas and just don't turn up alone but also celebrate something big and as you said just study to the study to get the new cosy water and uh, we expect to see everybody in the stadium uh Mika So moving on from yeah let me ask quickly what can you yes, say what what, what yeah. can you say what can you think uh, has there been a change in the coaching style in the preparation in the program that you tactics. know of? tactics i mean what is it that that you can probably say okay maybe hapa coach amebadilisha hapa there has been a fundamental change in the way maybe they 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 attack they play uh, train Uh, one of the areas where i can tell you that we have improved is in the defense uh we can be able to sustain uh, a, a barrage of an attack like in the canada game yes What? they attacked us for two minutes continuously two minutes in uh, in sevens is a long time and uh, the team held its own uh were able to not give away fouls 
uh, defend and be able to create turnovers, get the ball, and go on attack. We were a very good um, team in attack. We were athletic, we were fast. But one of our Achilles heel was defense. That seems to be sorted out. I believe the playing, because it, the boys have been playing together as a unit for quite a long time. Uh, Innocent didn't do so much changing in the, in, in the team, in the core of the team. So I think it's a matter of the boys believing in themselves, believing in the coach, standing for each other, mm-hmm. and just improving in their game plan. So uh, sometimes we always we say it's... Um, that consistency work works out in sport, and it seems like consistency is playing out this time. Yeah. So let's wait and see how it, what, uh, how it goes. Thanks. Okay, so moving on from uh, moving on from rugby, we are going to go to Olympics, and uh, uh, so uh, Sabrina Wanjiku Simada is set to make history in Pyeongchang, South Korea, as the first female alpine skier compete for Kenya in the Winter Olympics. The 19-year-old who's based in Austria is the only Kenyan competitor in the February 9, 2015, but will be joined by Philip Boyd, who created this story as the first Kenyan Winter Olympia in Nagano, Japan, in 1998 as her team leader. Uh, Samida qualified for the Games after taking part in the World Ski Championship in St. Maurice, Switzerland, last February, and he competed in the Women's Super G and Super Dance Slalom in Pyeongchang. She says she has been inspired by the desire to be the first Kenyan and only African woman to qualify for alpine skiing in the Winter Olympics. So, guys, uh, we see we have the Kenyan team. We have this Kenyan skier here. We have a Nigerian uh, bobsled bobsled team mm-hmm. who also yes. here was Olympic, who also competed for the first time. Mm-hmm. And um, we, if you remember the movie Cool Running, the Jamaica got the first yep. uh, mm-hmm. country with the, where there's no to actually go for the Olympic team. So, what do you think? Do you think it's high time that these countries that actually don't, um, these countries that don't have winter, don't have snow, do you think it's time for them to start considering actually taking part in these games so that it gives them a, a platform to improve their overall Olympic medal house. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah. don't, I don't know why it's written that you only have to have snow so that you compete in the winter games. But then if you can qualify and you, you're good enough, I don't see why. Remember the Olympic free skater, the one who, the 17-year-old, the American? Yeah, She's yeah. Ghanaian by origin. So yeah, yeah, but, but she Mika... She would have represented Ghana in that. Yes, but Mika, what you're saying, I think, you know, what you should be talking about is parents... You know, like uh, people of foreign origin who are in Europe or maybe uh, the United States to encourage their kids to take part in these winter sports. I'm okay with that. But uh, asking if, like, African countries should start participating uh, in these winter sports, I would say absolutely no. Because I think, you know, we need first to focus on the infrastructure of, of the sports that we currently have, that we're not doing so well currently, rather than bring a foreign concept uh, and, you know, maybe it involves bringing in snow or taking people abroad. I don't think that's a good idea, but I fully support so, the idea of black parents, you know, or, or rather p- parents from Africa who are in the United right. States or in Europe mm-hmm. encouraging their kids to right. take part in this uh, winter sport. That's that a more, yeah, that's a more sound model. And before you continue, Mika, I have two points. So first, I thought in 2010 we had a team go out for those winter olympic games i remember seeing like two men being escorted by a white coach before so i know kenya has participated in the winter olympics um, before and i believe it was the men's skiing um event and two like winter i think there'll there'll be too much sunken dollars and sunken cost into investing into those players and we we don't have a competitive advantage in that where are they going to practice diani beach can sand mimic snow when we get Mount them Kenya. to like, to like gather the, the, the sand I together said, and just time for this, I said it is this time for these African nations to consider taking their residents who are already competing in this sport in another country to take them in and send them into the Olympics. And then let's say you are in the U.S., <laughs> you are skiing, you're not good enough to get to the U.S. team and you have Kenyan heritage. Is it, is it time for this for a country like Kenya to say, okay, fine. Okay. We can take you into the ah, Olympics and ah, work okay. with that. Okay, ah. okay. That, that, oh, angle, yeah. that, that angle, that angle, yeah. So, like, adopt a player, said, but not really. Is, I said she is the first female alpine skier to compete for Kenya in the Winter Olympics. And you then know. I said yeah. 
she'll be accompanied by Philip Boit, who was the first Winter Olympian for Kenya. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. okay, there we go. Right. Okay. Sorry about that, Mika. Olympian for, Winter Olympian for I was Kenya. presenting so, alternative facts. I retract uh, yes. my rebuttal. Okay. Kellyan Conway style. Kellyan Conway, yes. Oh, wait, yeah. uh-uh. Pause. <laughs> Pause right there. You I agree. Gonna... <laughs> I agree with you, Mika. And I, I think, yes, because we have people who live here, whatever, but you'll find out when it Olymp- when it's time for Olympics, they're representing their own country. Their own that's, countries. That's, that's what I was about to say. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, like uh, that lady from Zimbabwe, uh, Courtney. She was a swimmer. She was a swimmer. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Even Brian yeah. Danford. For your water, I mean, what Ali was uh, saying Danford. to me was more like to naweka kwamba kuna imichezo ni Africa, kuna imichezo ya uko. You know, yoyo tale kuapa. I mean, kuna watu ambao wanakwenda, let's say, kama mtu iko Russia. You know, labda likuwe mtoto balozi you know kazaliwa Russia kakule Russia mm-hmm. na kuna winter na kule kama anataka kuendelea kuwakilisha Kenya as long as i qualify unajua that's it yeah anaweza akarudi na kaweza kuwakilisha kwa hiyo mimi nafikiri labda inaweza ikawa labda ndio watu ambao wanaweza kaleta mm-hmm. you know ari yeah yeah ya yeah, yeah, watu kuweza kufanya michezo but tunaweza tukatumia hiyo pia kama kama advantage I, 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 I am with you Mika on that one i think i think we're in agreement mm-hmm. over here yeah. all right uh, so moving on uh this sunday this sunday we are going to have uh the showcase where <laughs> the showcase called the super bowl which will be held in minnesota minneapolis Nime- uh, mm-hmm. at the usa bank stadium where the patriots will take the super bowl uh the field um uh, for super bowl uh, 52 on sunday in minneapolis and will be there will be it will be a game against the Super Bowl juggernaut versus the Super Bowl underdog. So the Patriots, um, they used to be they, they used to be in the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is an old hat, and they'll be vying for their second straight championship and their sixth Super Bowl. While uh, the Philadelphia Eagles will be vying for their first Super Bowl. Uh, they'll be vying for their first Super Bowl. Uh, which they haven't won in franchise history, and then their quarterback would be the first, uh, the starting quarterback to be uh, who, uh, who's Carson Wentz. It will be their backup, who's Nick Foles. Nick Foles. So if the Eagles join, if the Eagles win, they'll join the Giants as one of only two teams that were able to take out a mighty empire in the Super Bowl. So this is a Super Bowl whereby. It's a rematch. Remember, 2005, these two teams once were met before uh, the, Super Bowl, mm-hmm. the Super Bowl, and the Patriots won 24-21. Mm-hmm. And um, the game will be played uh, in an indoor stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, the focus is, is being said to be around six degrees. Uh, we have Justin Tieberlake uh, performing at halftime. Pink will sing the national an- anthem before kickoff, and um, uh, it will be Brady's eighth Super Bowl appearance. And nobody has ever played ball. And um, if the Patriots win, then Brady will have most uh, will have the most Super Bowl wins as a uh, as a player. Uh, I think yeah, I think they play. So, and if the Eagles win, they'll be the fourth team in NFL history to win the Super Bowl after having a losing record in the previous season of seven to nine. So, guys, <sighs> it's Giant versus Giant Killer. <laughs> uh, we made predictions. We expecting. <laughs> we were expecting. Uh, I wasn't expecting these two teams in the Super Bowl. To be honest, I was expecting these two teams. Uh, to Jacksonville and and J- J- just said, Mika, I am uh, the one. I am the one who put these two teams in the finals in the last prediction we made. Really? J- just said. <laughs> the getting, record is there. The are record you is there. Getting a payday? Hmm? The record is there. I don't need to be paid. I don't do stuff <laughs> uh, to get paid. Okay. I think I actually okay. had both teams. I, I agree. So, I, had, I had both teams. Uh, so, okay, so we have both teams. Let's make final predictions here. Who do you think is going to win and why do you think they are going to win? Okay, I'll but start with you, Ali. Go to Omosh, go to One Mike, go to Alka, and then I'll close it out. All right. Uh, I, 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 I personally want the Eagles to win. I think they might still give it to Brady because they want this romantic story of this guy who won so many Super Bowls and then he's going to retire and be going to become the greatest, you know, like, uh, you know, like man of all time. But, but, but I really want Philly yeah. to win because Philly is a very brutal city if you've lost, you know, like, and they've never won a Super Bowl before. You know, like, all they did during the whole season will not matter if they lose this. So, 
on Sunday, I'll be rooting for Philadelphia. Um, this is Brady's to lose. So I'm not rooting for I'm not rooting for Tom Brady. I'm actually rooting for Philly. But the reality of it is that the Patriots will win. Go ahead. Oh, you, they're about to skip over me in the studio. Resist, anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah, my, I'm, yeah, I'm not <laughs> supporting. <laughs> I'm not supporting the Patriots. I feel Patriots support, supporters have uh, are suffering from a colonial mentality. Go Eagles. <laughs> I'm sorry. They say third time is the charm. Uh, so Eagles defense, defense will play a huge role with Philly. Defense now, we, even if they have a backup QB, Falls might actually do wonders for the for 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 for, for the Eagles. So, Eagles defense the first the, the first defense to get an INT for or, or a kick return special teams, Danny Danny Danny. But they have to play 60 minutes, not 28 like Jacksonville. Right, and we just have two comments here. Of course, uh, Leah okay. Kerubo saying go Eagles. Ian is saying it doesn't matter, but we all know who's winning. Who's still on their knee with Kaepernick? Oh, uh, I'm still on, on their knee? Uh, like, yeah. you're talking about players or... No, Malcolm still, Jenkins. I'm talking about people who are so amped up about the Super Bowl. Shouldn't we be on our knee okay, and not okay, be before, watching before, the network? Before, okay. anyway. Malcolm Jenkins. Before we, go back, before, we start protest, before we start protesting and all, uh, mm -hmm. let me finish up so that I can close this segment. Uh, my heart says Eagles. I want the Eagles to win. I want, um, I really want them to win. But I don't like both teams, but I really want the Eagles to win. And as one Mike said, <laughs> the thing here is the Eagles have a much superior um, defense. They're more athletic. They're younger. And they can give uh, Brady and the Patriots a run for their money. But this game will be won on the sideline. It will all go to, 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 to who's going to coach the other one. The Eagles have to play the game for the whole entirety of the Facebook game. Because if they put points and think they won, Belichick will out-coach and out-think them. So, as much as we want the Eagles to win, the Eagles have to play the whole game. And to me, I think the winner will be the team that will be best coached. And I don't think there's any team that is better coached than the Patriots. I don't think there's any coach out there who cannot coach Belichick. So I see the Patriots getting two in a row. And you want to counter one, Mike? Like no, 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 no. I'm with you. I'm waiting for you to <laughs> wrap it up. Oh. <laughs> all right. And that is all for sport. That go goal. Go Eagles. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mabibi Nababwana is still a non-core presentation of the One Mike Show, and we are about to get into the break before before we get into the hit or miss segment. So Yay. keep it locked. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. www.onemicshow.com 202-683-4570. And real quick, in the second half of the show, we're going to be talking about, yep. you know, misreported crime in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Crime being not reported properly by diaspora media outlets. And then we're also going to be talking about the Black Panther premiere, and there's going to be the Vegas yes. report. So stay tuned. DJ Machachari Mulet Habari. DJ Session.